Yang is a North Korean exile now living in South Korea who has known much pain and suffering in her life, both physically and emotionally. Yang says life in North Korea was unbearable and brutal. I was living in the poorest village in North Korea. We had to eat sand, which was hard to get. I had to go far away to get this sand, and only a few people got some. I also had to eat wood. It was difficult to go to the bathroom. At the peak of the famine in the mid-1990s, Yang says 10 or 11 people in her village were starving to death every day. Many suffered mental breakdowns as unspeakable horrors took place. Desperate to help her family that included two daughters, Yang snuck into China in 1998. She wanted to earn money, then return to North Korea and start a small business. With the Chinese police looking for North Korean defectors, Yang was unable to work and return home, where she was viewed as a traitor and abused and beaten. In 2002, she fled North Korea again to China with hopes of making some money. There, Yang met an ethnic Korean woman who was operating a rice-selling business. This woman was a Christian. Before this lady left the house, she prayed. At work, she prayed. I asked her what she was doing, and she said she believed in God and went to church. I asked her, what was church? She told me about the existence of God, and if you meet God, you will be blessed. Yang gave her life to Christ and returned to North Korea, where she would begin a business now as a Christian. I was doing a noodle and rice business in North Korea, and as I learned in China, I prayed when I was doing my business. The lady beside me asked what I was doing. I didn't say anything. Some of my relatives from China also saw me praying and told the lady I was a Christian, and she told the authorities that I was a Christian. The authorities brought Yang in for questioning, but they couldn't find any evidence that she'd become a Christian. Doing so is seen as an act of treason in North Korea, as only the worship of the Kim family is allowed. The lack of evidence didn't stop authorities from arresting Yang and beating and torturing her. This went on for a month. They used a shovel to beat people. That's what they did to me. Your body becomes blue everywhere. After I was released, I was followed everywhere by the authorities. I was not allowed to speak anywhere I went. My in-laws didn't even treat me like a human, so I decided to leave the country again. Yang went back to China in 2003, and while there, she was kidnapped. She was sold into slavery as a maid and repeatedly raped. I was sold to a businessman who owned a department store. I was locked in the house. I was a slave. The telephone line was cut and the doors were locked from the outside, so I couldn't run away. I was a slave there for one month and 13 days before I escaped. Yang's troubles in China continued, as she didn't speak the language and survival was extremely difficult. In 2006, while six months pregnant, she and a friend decided to try to make it to South Korea. With the help of some brokers, they were brought near the Mongolian border. It was winter and very cold. The ground was covered in snow. Yang and her friend got lost, and for three days they couldn't find the guards at the border garrison. Yang miscarried and placed the baby in a handbag. I didn't know what to do, but I had to walk. So I hung the bag around my neck and walked all night. All around us were skeletons and bones. Those bones were North Korean defectors. My friends started to rip my clothes because I didn't give her bread. Yang didn't have any food. Her friend was hallucinating. Yang was devastated as she watched her friend die in the snow in the bitterly cold temperatures of Mongolia. Her heart finally stopped, but I will never forget her eyes. She was crying and looked at me. After my friend died, I think I was in shock. I fell asleep. I woke up. I felt warm. I thought it was sunshine, and I had one hand on my friend and the other hand on my baby. It was still dark. I got up and prayed for the Lord to save me. 
Two more days would pass before Yang was finally discovered by patrolling Mongolian border guards. They found her lying in the snow. She was unable to open her eyes or move. Yang was taken to a hospital in Mongolia. The bodies of her friend and baby were left behind. Yang suffered severe frostbite. Very little could be done by the medical staff in Mongolia, so Yang was flown to Seoul to the South Korean Armed Forces Medical Command. Because of the frostbite, all of Yang's toes were amputated on her left foot. There was also some damage to her right foot, and a nerve from her right thigh was transplanted to the left foot. Five years later, Yang is still in constant pain. With all that Yang has been through, it's amazing that she's been able to keep going and look to the future. She credits her faith in Jesus Christ as the reason she has hope, but admits her faith has been tested. When I almost died in Mongolia, I prayed for God's help. My baby died, my friend died, and God didn't answer my prayers. At the time, I was bitter, but God gave me the heart to leave and I kept praying to leave. He saved me. Now I have become a faithful Christian and to be a missionary for God. I am learning about God and I will live for God. Yang has suffered so much abuse and heartache over the years and with all that she's had to endure, you'd expect that she'd be bitter, but she's not. In fact, Yang is looking forward to the future as a missionary to North Koreans. I want to minister to the people of my home country. I want to make sure I spread the word of God. I want people to know that there is an invisible God who we are to believe in, whether they are in North Korea, China, or anywhere in the world. I also want to tell about real life in North Korea to the world, and that there are people like me in North Korea. It's a country that doesn't believe in God. The reason I choose to do missionary work is because there are many North Korean defectors living in the world. I want them to know I survived, and I will be more persuasive for them to believe in Christ. Should the door open, Yang would like to return to North Korea to bring her people the message of God's love and forgiveness, something she experienced after coming into a relationship with Jesus Christ, of which she sings about from the heart. <laughs> Ah. Uh.